a band 9 model answer that meets each requirement for the top score, approved by a former IELTS examiner. That's what I've prepared for you today. This is IELTS General Training Writing Task 1, the letter writing task. Excited? It's Asia. Let's get started. One of the key elements of letter writing is choosing the grammar and vocabulary that match the formality of the context. IELTS Task 1 letters can be formal, semi-formal or informal. Task 1 letters are more likely to be those where you are writing formally to someone you have never met, like in this example taken from IELTS Cambridge General Training 12. You are writing a letter to a company. This is definitely a formal letter. Some letters require slightly less formality, as in this example where you are writing to your manager, a particular human being you see every day. This is a semi-formal letter. You may also be required to write an informal letter to a friend. So, today let's look in detail at this example. A friend has written to you asking your advice about whether to spend a year before starting university, traveling or to work for the year. Write back to your friend in your email, yes, in your email, say why he or she wouldn't enjoy traveling, explain why getting a job is a good idea, suggest types of jobs he or she could do. Remember that task one is worth one third of the total band score. So if you score an eight on task one, but a band six on task two, that would give you 6.67 rounded down to the overall band score of 6.5 for the writing section. That's why you should spend not more than 20 minutes on task one. Now the letter. Let's look at it all the way through first. As you follow it on screen while I read, think about the three bullet points we have to include. How many paragraphs are there? One for each bullet point? How does the letter open? If you're writing to a friend, there should be some kind of a friendly greeting, no? And how does the letter end? After you've read it, we'll look in detail at the main features and see how they match the task one descriptors in the four areas tested. Task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource or your vocabulary, and finally, grammatical range and accuracy or your grammar. And here is the letter. Dear Monica, it was great to hear from you and congratulations on your brilliant exam results. I'm sure you can't wait to start university, but you've asked for my thoughts on what you should do over the next 12 months, and I honestly believe getting a job is the answer. Although traveling seems such an attractive option, I'm convinced you wouldn't enjoy it. You've never been the type of person who liked going without home comforts, so I can't imagine you sleeping in cheap student hostels. On the other hand, working abroad for a year would give you invaluable first-hand insight into another culture, as well as the chance to improve your fluency and, as you want to study modern languages, the experience could be really worthwhile. Not only that, you'll be making lots of new friends. If I were you, I'd start looking at schools either in France or Spain that want assistant teachers. You won't need any previous experience, and I'm sure it would be rewarding. An alternative might be working as an au pair, you know, living with the family and probably taking care of their young children, though that has its pros and cons, as you can imagine. Of course, it's up to you, but believe me, a year's work experience is the best. Take care, Nicole. Were you counting paragraphs? Five, right? Each has its specific aim. 
One thing that is very important is to cover all three bullet points. That's what the category task achievement is all about. A band aid requires that you cover all requirements of the task sufficiently. And that means that you present, highlight and illustrate bullet points clearly and appropriately. That's according to the official task one descriptors the examiner uses when grading IELTS essays. Another important aspect included in task achievement is the tone. It's mentioned in band 7 and assumed in bands 8 and 9 as something that is consistent and appropriate. What it refers to is the level of formality and the language we use to show those levels. Just as we wouldn't write to a bank manager using expressions such as how is everything at the bank? Take care of yourself. Neither would we begin a letter to a friend with I am writing in reply to your letter dated October 15th, in which you asked me for advice concerning your gap year. No, that's the other way around. I am writing in reply to your letter is for the bank manager and how is everything, take care, is for the friend. Let's check over each paragraph thinking of how this letter scores on task achievement. Paragraph 1 opens by making it clear that this is a reply to a letter and states what the writer's opinion is with regard to the two options. It's a great way to open the letter because it paraphrases the task details, the friend asking for advice, and also has a friendly tone typical of personal letters. Great to hear from you. Congratulations on your brilliant exam results. In other words, in the first paragraph, we have a friendly tone, we have a context, and we have started to tackle the three bullet points. Let's move on to the second paragraph. It follows with an explanation as to why traveling for a year is not the best option, exactly as stated in the first bullet point. The tone is fine. It gives perhaps the impression of a slightly older friend who's writing from experience and importantly uses that first-hand knowledge to support her point of view by mentioning not the type of person who likes going without home comforts. Perhaps we could add an example like this. Remember that time we went camping and you were miserable all week? Examiners like to see examples to back up the main points. Paragraph 3 comes next. It justifies the job option and that is done through the fact that the friend wants to study languages at university, so it's quite easy to show how a year working abroad would be a great preparation for such studies. The tone is relatively neutral, I think. It's neither overly formal or informal, because this is the most serious part of the letter where she's trying to convince her friend that the job option is the best. And paragraph 4. In this paragraph, two job options are suggested, together with reasons for taking them. And again, it's a fairly neutral tone, starting off with a classic conditional form of offering advice. If I were you, I'd… How does the letter end? It's good to finish your letter strongly, not only with an expression of farewell, but also, as in this case, with some sort of conclusion. And the tone returns to friendly. It's up to you. Take care. Right, now what about the other three categories the examiner will look at? Coherence and cohesion, lexical results and grammatical range and accuracy. Let's start, in fact, with your grammar. A high band score, a band 8, for example, will be given to an essay that includes a wide range of grammatical structures, which are sufficiently complex where necessary. In practice, 
very few IELTS essays are completely error-free, but as long as you can produce a good number of error-free sentences, then you'll get a high band score. In our letter, I counted just 10 sentences. All of them are complex. And as it's a model answer, all the verb tenses are handled well. We see a good use of the present perfect to refer to events from the past that are still relevant. You've asked me, you've never been. Above all, the letter has several examples of modal verbs and conditional forms. Altogether, I counted 12 examples of these forms. This is not surprising because the idea is to discuss future possibilities and compare options. So we see how the writer makes assumptions based on how well she knows your friend. You can't wait. You wouldn't enjoy. I can't imagine you. Or you can. She also gives advice and speculates on that advice. What you should do would give you insight. Could be really worthwhile. You'll be making friends. You won't need. It would be really rewarding. We've used a range of modal verbs and we also have the elegant conditional form of giving advice. If I were you, I'd... At the same time, remember that this is an informal letter and that's why there are so many verbal contractions throughout, ranging from I'm to you've, I'd, it's and wouldn't. All are perfectly acceptable in a letter of this sort. But please remember that in formal letters, they should not be used. Vocabulary? Well, when the examiner looks at your vocabulary, the question is how wide and how deep it is. Depth of vocabulary means we know a lot about a particular topic, but that's not always possible. We can't know everything. In this letter, the vocabulary is familiar without being really a specialist. Yes, there is a mention of insight into another culture and fluency in regard to studying languages, as well as um, assistant teacher and au pair when possible jobs are mentioned. But there is nothing extraordinary and maybe there shouldn't be in such a personal informal letter. Remember that the examiner is interested in how you use English effectively, not in your insider knowledge on any particular topic. What is interesting, though, is the use of collocation, those familiar combinations of words that native speakers use all the time. So some good examples here are to make friends, a worthwhile experience, and previous experience. Add to those one or two colloquial phrases, pros and cons, it's up to you. And we have items that the examiner will always be looking out for. What about coherence and cohesion? The paragraphs as well as the sentences within them are also well organized and well connected. There are good examples of cohesive devices or linking words. Look at paragraph three. Although traveling seems so I can't imagine. Paragraph four then contrasts that by opening with on the other hand. And the letter also has examples of and, but, though, and not only that. When we think about coherence, the notion should be that everything fits together in a perfectly logical sequence and that we can trace the connections between ideas. Notice how the theme of study and work are linked throughout the letter. This model letter is just one example of how to answer this topic, but you can see how the paragraphs are all linked thematically, grammatically and lexically, the all-important aspect of vocabulary. And if you'd like to learn how to write letters like this, and more generally, how to meet all the IELTS writing and speaking requirements and answer each type of task, check out my IELTS general pack. It will help you prepare in less time and achieve a higher score. And it's linked 
in the description below. And of course, I never counted the words. All right, I'll tell you. 220, a good length. In fact, a short letter may not develop all the bullet points and therefore not score so well on task achievement. So when you're preparing for task one, yes, count your words, but more importantly, double check that you have covered all the bullet points. There are a number of common mistakes students make in general training task one. Not covering one of the bullet points is a costly one. You can learn about others in this video here. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam.